Hello everyone. So today we are going to start on with the commands and we are going to learn a few very basic commands to get starting. So if you do not want to miss on any of the videos that we are going to come up to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. Now the objectives of today's lecture are we are going to study the PWD command, the cal command, TTY, who, who am I, history command and then we are going to go up with tab completion which is very important to learn to just pace up the way you type in the commands and other things and at last we are going to go through a bit of practice questions so do watch the video till the end and try out those practice tests so that you are clear that you have understood whatever we have discussed today so the very first command is pwd now the importance of the pwd command it prints you the current working directory now let's understand why pwd is important if you are in the graphical user interface, you know what you are doing and where you are doing. So let us suppose that if I just right click here and I say new folder and I type in a name F1. So I, I know that I have created a folder where on the desktop. Okay. If I go inside home, I can see the contents of what the folder home in case of Windows or the directory home in case of Linux. So in Linux, we use the term Folder uh, directories and not folders. So whatever I'm looking at is the content of home folder which was inside the which was there on the desktop. Now if I go further inside downloads, I know that there's nothing in the downloads and I might create a new folder here. Okay. So I just create a new folder here G. Now if I delete G, I know that I have deleted it from where? From within the downloads folder. So you are in the graphical user interface, you are able to see where you are doing anything. But once you get to the command line mode, now if you do something here, let us write ls. So it gives me, shows me the contents of a directory, but which directory I don't know. Okay. So pwd is going to tell me the present working directory, okay, which is what slash home slash Baljit. Whatever I will do, if I do not specify the directory path, then everything will be done within this current working directory, which is what slash home slash Valjit. For example, if I create a new file with a touch command, so I write it new file. Now where this new file is created within my current working directory, because I have not specified where to create this new file. So by default, it will be done within your current working directory. So if I do ls, you can see that this new file is there now okay so here it is in a new file okay so pwd is going to tell me the current working directory the next command is cal which stands for calendar so it's a pretty simple command to use just write in cal and it will show you the calendar of the current month with the current or with the today's date being highlighted so today is 25th when i'm recording this video 25th of july so 25th is highlighted you can give in any number from the months so let us suppose i want to see the calendar of fourth month and i want to see for the year 2000 so it will show me april of 2000 so i can give in anything any date so let us suppose 11th month for 2050 right and there are certain options that you can use now what are options how do i know what options are there the command is man manual page this is another very important command man stands for manual page if i write man space cal it is going to show me the detail about cal we are going to discuss manual command uh, in a separate video that will be coming up later on so as of now just remember that man is the command to check the manual page so manual page is the best way to learn what the command can do so it is tell it tells you that cals displays the calendar synopsis is how to use the command and then there are options okay so there are a lot of options that you can use with cal command okay i'm going to use a few of them so i'm going to use now one of the options so if i write cal only cal you will see that the output is like this and if i write cal minus m the output is a little different can you spot what is the difference yes this time the days of the week starts with monday and not with sunday okay so the difference is here it starts with sunday but this time it starts with monday 
okay so this is how we can change the behavior of the command by using the options the next command is tty tty is very important to understand if you are using the command line interface tty is going to tell me the terminal in which i am logged in so it tells me that okay i am using the terminal tty2 if i press control alt f4 and i log in and i use the command tty again it tells me now that the terminal is tty2 it also tells me that the previous login was on tty2 which actually is displayed by default once you log in but tty is just going to tell you the current terminal only so if i log into let us post f6 log in again and use tty now it is tty6 so once you are on the graphical interface you open the terminal and you write tty it tells you that on you are on the terminal 0 okay so you can use this tty command to know on which terminal you are logged in the next command is who the who command tells in who are the currently logged in users into the system so it's pretty simple to use simply write who so if i write now who i can see that there are there's the user bajit which is logged in on so many different terminals on tty 2 4 6 0 on all the terminals the same user is logged in because i just logged in with the same user there might be different users that are working at the same point of time on different terminals so we are going to try it out now so let us shift to one of the terminals tty 5 i'm going to log in with another user let us post the root user this time okay and now if i use who i see all other output this is same but there's another entry with root user on terminal 5 okay this is my terminal number 5 now i'm going to log in with another user on the terminal 3 okay this time my username is rohit who doesn't have a password set so this is the terminal number 3 and if i use who you can see now there are users Paljeet, root and rohit it doesn't matter on which terminal you are the output will be same so if i come back to the graphical interface type in who and you can see that the output is same okay so who is going to tell you which are the currently logged in users on any terminal the next command is who am i so it is pretty simple that it tells you that who you are so it is going to display the user id of the current user itself okay so who am i so it just tell you that the current user's name is baljeet now the last command for today is history so history will tell you the list of commands that you have just executed in the current session so if you want to just see that how many commands or which commands you have used you can use the command history so we've used quite a few commands here if i type in history it gives me the list of all the commands that i've used okay so i've used a lot of commands you can show that there are a total of 310 commands that i've used okay so all the commands are appended or are preceded with the number which is the, the command number or the order in which you have typed in the commands so the 310th command was history which i just typed who am i was 309th and so on Now the advantage of using history is that from that list of the command number you can use the command again so i will just use history again uh, the output is little different this time because i've used the command a few more times now if i want to execute command number 309 again so i simply need to write an exclamation mark and 309 and it will automatically execute okay the command who am i is executed and the output is also there so let us suppose I execute 301, which was calendar for 11th month of the year 2050. See, it has executed the command cal 112050 and the calendar output is there. Now, another way of using the history command is sometimes you don't remember that what was the exact command that you wrote um, to execute a certain task. For example, like in this case, you don't remember that to see the calendar of 11th month of 2050, what was the exact command that you wrote but you remember that you used cal okay so you can simply write cal and then exclamation mark cal and then press enter okay so it will execute the most recently used cal command so this is how you can use history command 
to either see the list of commands which you have recently executed or actually run one of those commands again. Now the last part is tab completion. Tab completion means that you need not to write the entire thing all together on your own. Now if I do ls it gives me the list of the files and directories. Now let us suppose I want to simply do ls and check about cal.txt. I don't want to write cal.txt. I know that cal.txt is a unique name. So what I can simply write, I can write CA and then press tab. It will automatically fill in the rest of the thing. Okay. Similarly, if you write new underscore file, so I can just write new, press tab, it will fill in new underscore file. If there is a clash, let us suppose that date.sh and date.txt. So if you write DA and then press tab, it will go till the common part, which is date.sh. Now you need to decide that either you want to write sh or you want to write txt if you simply press tab again okay it will show you both those files so from here it gives you an option you go for sh or you can go for txt and then complete it okay so tab helps you to auto complete whatever you are typing if it is unique so that is all for today so we have discussed some of the common commands like pwd cal um, just a mistake here cal should have been with small c okay so it is a strictly type language all the commands are in small caps okay tty who who am i and history so now important part whatever you have learned have you really understood that so i'm going to ask you a few questions the very first question is now you try it out and try to display the calendar for january february and march month of 2018 so i hope you have got it correct the answer is cal 1 minus a 2 2018 there might be a different answer also it's not that always there's one sim single command which is the correct answer there can be multiple answers this is one of them so here what i have used is i have used the minus a option which tells you that if you specify here cal1, cal1 means first month, 2018 is the year. So it is going to show me January of 2018. But with the minus A option, it allows you to add in two more months. So the starting month will be the first month. Then A2 means two months after that. So January and two months after that is February and March for the year 2018. Second question is, how to know the week number of 28th March 2000. So I'm not sure that what was the week number on that particular day. So simply pause this video and don't look at the answer. Just try it on your own and then come back and test whether your answer was correct or not. So the answer to the question is NCAL minus W3 2000. Now this NCAL might seem strange uh, this is not the option in all the distributions if you are using ubuntu you will find this along with your cal if you open the manual page and minus w option is used to give the weak numbers so i'm just going to demonstrate this with ubuntu if you are using red hat or CentOS, then you might not find this option of ncal so if i open the manual page for cal so you can see here that it displays cal as well as ncal both displays the calendar and date of easter so now there's an option minus w also if you scroll down okay minus w where it is prints the number of the week below each week column now if i write ncal minus w and then what is the question it should be third month for 2000 right so now here this 9 10 these are the weeks so 9th week, 10th week, 11th, 12th, 13th and so on. So the answer is 13th week. So the data I am looking for is lies in this week, 13th week. So now the last question is, how can you execute the 100th command of the current session again? Yes, the answer is pretty simple exclamation mark and 100 so this i'm going to go with the history where you can just execute the command by typing exclamation mark followed by the command number that you want to execute again 
so that's it for the today's session hope you have enjoyed it see you next time in the next video so do not forget to subscribe so that you do not miss any of the videos see you in the next class take care goodbye